Hi, I'm Stan Toller, and I'm a product of the Sunday School. I was converted in a Sunday School class at age four when uh, Mrs. Shook gave an invitation, explained the plan of salvation, and we sang the song, End of My Heart, Come Into My Heart, Lord Jesus, Come In Today, Come In to Stay. And he did, and I'm 61 years old now, and I've been following Jesus since that day. Most importantly, I have my lifetime friend and mentor. I remember so well uh, hearing him at a super conference in Lynchburg, Virginia, when John Maxwell and I, we were serving together in Lancaster, Ohio, drove in an old beat-up station wagon with four other pastors to this super conference, and Dr. Towns was just our favorite speaker, and so we invited him to Lancaster. And Dr. Towns, when you came to my office, I know you were thoroughly impressed. Let with me tell about the office. Please do. It was full of junk. It <laughs> had toys and, and bubblegum wrappers and bubblegum boxes all over the place. Tell them what the office was. Well, it was actually the baptismal dressing room. That's the office that John Maxwell gave me. And, I and he, brought, he walked me in. I said, where's your office? And you said, this is it. This is it. I was there with all the bus ministry candy and bubblegum and Tootsie Rolls. I loved you because you you love Sunday school and you love reaching people for Jesus Christ. Exactly right. And Dr. Towns, you know, I started pastoring church when I was 17, but I think you were 19. That's right. And so we both have a long ministry history, but both of us have remained passionate about Sunday school. And you have a story about a coffee truck and a Sunday school teacher that just everybody in the world needs to hear. And I would love for you to tell that story about okay. your Sunday school teacher and that okay. coffee truck. It was a Presbyterian man, but let me go back to the beginning. My mother met my father at a dance in Savannah, Georgia, 1930. Two years later, I was born after they got married in 1930. And when I was only five and a half years old, I walked in the living room and here was this man down on his knees. He had coffee pegs all over the floor. What you doing? He says, where do you go to Sunday school? What Sunday school? He said, you don't know what Sunday school is? No, sir. He began to say, it's a place where we tell stories, we have pictures, we color, all these things, he said, and we have a sand table. What's a sand table? You don't know what a sand table is? It's a table with sand on it. Does it fall off? No, we put a ledge around it. And then he began to say, you come to my Sunday school. You see, when you have a fish on the line, you have to bring him in. He had a fish. And he said, when you come, I'll show you how Jesus walked across a mountain. We'll make a mountain in that sand table, and then we'll get a mirror, and there'll be a lake, and I'll show you. He walked right across the top of the water. Yeah, he didn't think, no. Mom, I wanna go to Sunday school. And mother said, what Sunday school, sir? Now, she had been raised a Presbyterian out in the country, what is called an open field church, country church, Presbyterian. And when he said Presbyterian, mother said, well, I guess he can go there. She thought he might have been some cult or whatever. And then mother said, where is it? And when he told her, it was about four or five miles away. That's a long way. He's going to get lost. And so she said to him, he can't go until he's old enough. He said, son, look out the front door. Well, when I, I looked out the front door, there was a big black panel truck, gold letters, jewel tea coffee. Want to ride my truck to Sunday school? What little kid doesn't want to ride a truck to Sunday school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mother said, wait a minute. I know that neighborhood. During the Depression, all these houses were half built and they were dangerous to play in. Open ditches, she said, you'll go over there and get hurt. But he said, I'll come get you. So it was about the Sunday after Labor Day, 1938. I went to school on the first Monday and the second Sunday, I went to Sunday school. It was a rainy day. I remember standing on the front porch. We lived on a dirt street, the end of a dirt street. And here comes this truck splashing through the rain. I ran down, jumped in the back. I had wondered, would there be room enough for me? It was always filled with boxes. It was empty. Every Saturday night, Jimmy Breland would take and empty the truck and on Sunday morning, fill it up with children. So I got into his truck, went the next block and picked up the four Amar boys. Then we went five blocks to Eight Air Street and picked up the two Drigger children. And then we cut through a housing project and every Sunday, he would fill that truck and take us to Sunday school. Jimmy Breland changed my life. My mother said, you're going to go every Sunday. You're not going to miss. I used to give a pen. Do you remember those pens? I do. 
Perfect attendance. You got a gold pen. That's right. Second year, what do you get? A wreath. That's right. And then what'd you get? Well, I don't know, but I knew people that had them all the way to the bars. Floor. You bars. get a bar. That's, that's right. Third year, fourth year. Yeah, I used to say I got bars passed for naval for going to Sunday school. <laughs> Mother said, if you don't get that, I'll just beat you to death. <laughs> Mother loved me, but that was her way of warning me: go to Sunday school, I'll go, Mother. And so I went 14 years and never missed one time. I was not a good boy. I was a typical boy. But mother was a farm woman, and early on she drank, but as I got older, she began to reform until later she got born again. But my father never gave up the drink, and he died an alcoholic. And can a kid come from a home like that and serve God? Yes, if there's a Sunday school teacher. And today, you can go into a place, reach a kid, and it doesn't make any difference whether the parents are on drugs or alcoholic or whatever. You can reach that kid and he can become a pastor. Love Jesus Christ like I do. Well, to make a long story short, I could talk all day about Jimmy Breland, the best Sunday school teacher in the world. I remember one day I was walking home from school. I was in a fight. And I was, this guy called me a name and I called him a name, probably a cuss word. We dropped our books and we're just getting ready to fight. We're on Henry Street. And suddenly this black car comes pushing us out of the way, just inching it. I looked down, it was a fender of a black jewel tea coffee truck. That was Jimmy Beale. Elmer, get in the truck. And I got in, I was scared to death. He was gonna jump on me for cussing. <laughs> Didn't say a word. Didn't talk about fighting, talked to me, took me home, dropped me off. He said, I'll see you Sunday. And I can remember every Easter Sunday morning, he'd come scratching at the screen Elmer, get up. And I would jump up, put on my Easter duds, run out, get in his truck, and I went to sunrise service. I've done that for many years because of that tradition I learned from my Sunday school teacher. And he always had a cold six ounce bottle of Coca-Cola wait for me when I got in the truck early Sunday morning. And I don't remember those Sunday school, uh, I don't remember those messages at that sunrise service, but I remember him taking me, the impact. You know, Jimmy Breland was my substitute father. He taught me how to love God. He taught me not to drink and not to smoke. I was standing in front of that little Presbyterian church. I was about third grade. He said, see that guy? He had a lucky strike. He was tapping it out, getting ready to smoke. He said, boys, don't ever have your first cigarette. How come, Jimmy? He said, man, it's dumb, it's stupid. You go waste a bunch of money. He didn't talk about the body of Christ. He didn't call it sin. He just said, you're gonna waste a bunch of money. And so he reached down like this. He said, scoop, he said, if you get up some grass and pour it into a dollar bill and roll your own, men did it in those days, rolling their own uh, tobacco into a, a cigarette holder, a piece of paper. He said, put it in a dollar bill and burn up money. He looked at me right there. He said, Elmer, you like to burn up money? No, sir, not me. Don't ever have your first cigarette. Okay. And you know, I want you to know, he looked at us and he said, all right, boys, I want you to raise your hand. And all of us, this is out of class in front of the church, putting up our hand. He said, I want you to prom say after me, I promise I will never have my first cigarette. And I never did. My mother smoked, my dad smoked. My mother came from a family of 11. All of my uncles smoked. My dad came from a family of nine. All of my uncles smoked. And then I would say, why is Elmer different? because Christ was in my heart because there was a Sunday school teacher. Now the very next Sunday, we're standing at almost the identical place in front of the church. Now, between Sunday school and church, they had a little time. I call it a smoking break <laughs> for that little shirt. But he said, see those two men? They want to make elder. We won't let them be elder. They drink. Boys, don't have your first drink ever. Don't ever have your first beer. How come, Jamie? Man, it's dumb, it's stupid. You're going to waste a bunch of money. He said, it goes in, goes right down the toilet. He said, you might as well just flush your money down the toilet. He looked me right in the face. He says, Elmer, you like to flush money down the toilet? No, sir, not me. Don't ever have your first beer. Okay, put your hand up. And these little boys stood around. I promise I'll never have my first beer, so help me God. I made a promise in the third grade, and I've kept that promise. And as of today, I'm 79 years old. I've never had my first beer or my first sip of any type of alcoholic beverage. You can influence a young boy for the rest of his life, a young girl, 
by being a Sunday school teacher. Now, you're not Presbyterian, you're Nazarene. You should be better. You should have a power and ability to change lives. And so let me say to this, let me challenge you, go out and change one boy. And that one boy may be in Elmer Towns or a Stanton Toller. God bless you. Thank you, Elmer. You're special. You're a delightful friend and brother in Christ and a role model for all to teach Sunday school with excellence and with the power of the scriptures and the authority given by the Holy Spirit. God bless you.